Hey everybody, it's Ben and welcome to Bronco Fit 165 Week 12. This week is going to be a popular week because all we're talking about this week are abs, how to train them, uh, and more specifically when I say abs, I'm talking about our core as a whole and we'll kind of learn the difference between what are our abs and what are our core, although they're used interchangeably, they're actually two different things. So we'll go ahead and jump right into it here. So core training. So core by definition, it are the major muscles that move, stabilize, and su support the spine. And it is comprised of the following. So we do have the abdominals. We have those internal and external obliques that we see here. We have the transverse abdominus, which you can kind of think as that inner weight belt. And it's underneath all of this muscle here that kind of encircles, encompasses our body that really helps with that stabilization. And then we have the rectus abdominis, which is that six pack or that eight pack that you'll typically see if you're at a if somebody's at a lower uh, a low enough percent body fat. So keep this in mind: core and abdominals are not and abs are not the same thing. Abs make up part of the core because along with the abdominals, we also have our low back and deep spinal muscles. Of course, not anatomy class, so we're not going to go too much into it. But just know that you know some of those low back. Uh, the erector spinae and the quadratus laborum make up part of that core. And then also it goes down into our hip musculature as well. So our glutes, our hip rotators, our hip flexors, although you wouldn't typically think of them as being part of our core, they really do come into play and act as part of our core. So those are the three major parts, the abdominals, the lower back slash deeper uh, spinal muscles, and then the hip musculature. So we're going to go over some common misconceptions because there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to core training. And the first is spot training. Now I can't stress this enough, but you cannot specifically reduce fat from certain areas of your body. Doing those side twists or doing rotations isn't going to help take off the fat from, the le from your love handles. It's not going to help to reduce that. It's impossible to specifically target a area of your body to lose fat. So a lot of times you'll see one, the love handles, people do a lot of obliques trying to get rid of those love handles, and also triceps. If people have kind of fatty triceps, you'll see them trying to do a lot of tricep work in order to reduce some of that body fat. Or a good question that I have, uh, like a question that I have quite a bit is, what are some exercises that I can do to kind of uh, lose the body fat on my triceps? Or what are some exercises I can do to lose my love handles? And the real question, and the real tough, you know, conversation to have there is you can train it all you, all you want but until you reduce body fat it's not going to disappear and the, the thing is is that the order in which you put body fat on so if I'm if I am extremely lean and I start putting body, body fat on I will partic I will put body fat on first in my abdomen and then in my legs and it'll be opposite when losing body fat so then I'll lose weight or I'll lose fat first in my legs and then in my abdomen. So you can't specifically target one area to lose fat. Also, uh, crunches. Great exercise for working your abdo abdominals, but not your core. They create a stronger rectus abdominis, but, do, but they do not get you a strong core and developed abs. And by abs, in quotations there, I mean the uh, strong core. Core versus abs. Abs, we already kind of talked about this, but abs are simply a part of your core. Core is a lot more than just having a six pack. A lot of people can, you can have a great looking six pack, but you can have a weak core. You can also have a really strong core and not have a six pack because you might have some body, too much body fat layered on top of it. Really, when it comes down to seeing abs, the work's going to be done in the kitchen and discipline in making sure that you are keeping your body fat a low, at a low enough percentage. And then also, You'll typically see people going in, you know, what do you have for your workout today? Oh, I have cardio and abs, so they'll go in and do an hour cardio ab, uh, an hour cardio and ab workout. Um, and they don't necessarily need to spend all that much time on their abs. Our abs are really small muscles, and so we can tire them out really quickly. We can exhaust them really quickly. So the thing to keep in mind with training your core or training your abs your rectus abdominis specifically those that six pack muscle is one intensity is key so you got to keep that intensity up and then i always like to use the term six minute six pack whenever i train abs it's usually between four to eight minutes at a time and i'll usually throw it in 
at the end of my workout. Like I said, training abs for 45 minutes for an hour, you're just doing a lot more than what you really need to to get an effective core workout in. So our core is responsible for a lot of different movements, and here are some of them here. So we have flexion. So for instance, this is seen when doing a sit-up. We have extension. So example, if you're laying on your stomach and you're lifting that chest up in, into that Superman exercise or Superman position. We have lateral flexion. So example, you'll typically see a lot of people you know, holding on to a dumbbell and doing side bends where they lower it down their, the side of their leg and then back up. And then also we have rotation, so that's going to be like our Russian twist or a wood chop that we see per, that we see this person doing here. So how do we train our core? And that's the big question. Is there's, our core is composed of so many things. How can or so many muscle pieces, ugh, so many muscle groups? How do we train it? And we have to train for all of the movements. So for instance, we have flexion right here, but we can also train it using anti-flexion. So resisting, resisting the sit-up. So for instance, if we're doing a, a negative on the sit-up here. So we go up at the top and we hold the weight, and then we control it on the way down. Along with that, we have anti-rotation. So this is stuff like a pal-off press, a renegade row, wood chops, or my favorite are oak tree step-outs, where you hold the band out in front of you, where it's anchored to, your, to the side, and you take a step away with the band increasing the tension and it's going to want to pull your arms back but you have to keep those arms forward so like I said you're resisting that body from a, from allowing it to rotate. We also have anti-extension so this is where we get our plank and plank variations and then also we can do lots of hanging exercises if we want to really up our core. It's a great way to improve your core strength and progress your core training to the next level. You don't always have to do hanging exercises it's kind of more of an advanced but we have, for instance, at the rec, we have the power tower, which you can sit on and kind of position yourself using your elbows to, to rest, and you can get the same exact work as you would doing a hanging leg lift versus you just don't have to focus as much on the not swinging as much. We also have an order of operations, so the way we want to, we want to train our core. And the way we want to train our core is we want to work from the bottom up. So the first type, the first exercise we're going to do is going to really target that lower part of our core. The second one's going to be that lower part of the core with some sort of rotation. So getting the obliques in there. We're then working mid-range. We're then going from top down, top down rotation, and finishing with our serratus anterior, which is this little part, that little uh, serrated part that you see once you get to that low enough body fat percentage. And the reason that we want to do this is because our bottom up exercises are always the hardest because not only are we having to use our core but we are having to lift the weight of our legs as well. So these are going to be things like your hanging leg raises or just your, your lying down leg raises where our top down is going to be stuff like your crunches where you don't have to lift, as, your torso isn't as heavy as having to lift your whole entire legs. So always want to work from your bottom up. So you always want to work from the bottom of your core up and then finishing with that serratus anterior. So a sample six minute six pack core workout is we have, again, keep in mind or look for the order of operations here. Our first exercise is hanging leg raises or knee raises times 60 seconds we're working that lower that lower core hanging windshield wipers so we're getting mainly that lower with some rotational we got 30 seconds of rest in there our in and outs which is really going to hit that mid because we're working we're moving both our lower core and our upper core at the same time so it's kind of you know I like to think of it as almost like folding your body in half you're really getting the mid the mid section of your core starfish crunches which is like a crunch mixed with the rotation. So we have our our top our top down rotation. We then have our wood chops. So we have another rotational one in there. Finishing with our one last 
rest period for 30 seconds and then finishing with a wall plank which is going to help i always like finishing with a plank because it really targets everything and then also that uh, planks are good for that serratus interior and there's a lot of different exercises as well so that is what we have about core if you have any questions feel free to send me an email a couple little things here right before i jump off i just want to make sure i answered everything in the quiz just remember that the core is one composed of it's not composed of just your abdominal muscles lots of different muscles in there um, and then the other one is if you think about it every single exercise that you do starts with the core so all movement starts with the core and so no matter what you're doing whether it's legs whether it's upper body whether it's arm you're going to be using your core no matter what exercise it is so you're always going to be indirectly targeting that or indirectly hitting that core but you still want to directly hit the core using those exercises or creating a core workout but just like when other muscles are sore we need to allow our core to recover as well so it's uh you if your core is really tired and your core is sore it hurts it's probably a sign that you should give it a break yes you can probably go in and do your typical leg workout your upper body workout which is going to use a core but you should give your core a little bit of break from the direct hit from a core workout specifically so i hope you guys found this information useful like i said if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me and have a great week